Having beta readers finally dive into your book is both exciting and nerve wracking, but the real fun begins when you get to take their suggestions and start making edits. Today I'll be talking about how I use beta reader feedback to improve my books. Beta readers are one of the most valuable steps in my editing process. Sometimes it's difficult to know how any given element of a story will come off to everyday readers, as opposed to someone like a critique partner or an editor. Beta readers let you see the story through the eyes of an everyday reader and that is incredibly valuable for editing. For the mechanics of my beta reading process and all the questions I ask betas, you can check out my beta reading playlist which I'll link up in the cards. One thing I didn't mention in that video is that I encourage my beta readers to leave comments however they feel like. I make sure to let them know what kind of things will be most helpful for them to point out. For me, these are things like when you laugh at something or when a certain sentence is confusing. But I also make it clear that the questionnaires are the only thing I'm expecting them to do and everything else is completely up to what they feel like doing. My beta readers each read and review in their own individual document, so when they're all done reading and reviewing, I have a little bit of work to do to bring all the comments together. So I like to have all the questionnaire answers separated by beta reader, but I like to have all the inline comments in one document. So once they're all done reading and reviewing, I like to download a copy of their document. And then all I have to do is use words function of combine to bring all the inline comments into one document. But when trying to use the same feature for questionnaires, things get a little bit messy looking. So I prefer to review them one at a time. This also makes it easier for me to follow individual beta readers train of thoughts, because a lot of times, you know, they'll be connecting things that they said in a previous answer. So it's easier to just have all their answers in one document for each beta reader. So once I have all that stuff sorted out, I can start making my notes. This is a lot of feedback to work through, so of course I just like to go one section at a time. The last book to go to my beta readers was Alexia Legends 2. That book is about 95,000 words, which is broken into 12 sections. This leaves me with 13 total questionnaires for each beta reader. I start by reading all the questionnaires one section at a time, and making notes and highlighting things as I go. I like to use green for any areas of confusion, and then blue for correct predictions, and yellow for anything else. Then as I'm reading the feedback, I'm making my own separate notes on what I want to change based on that feedback. Then lastly, I go through the inline comments to see if there was anything else I need to add to my notes that wasn't included in the questionnaires. Usually the inline comments are more things like areas of confusion, typos, or things that they really enjoyed. So there's not normally a lot for me to add to my notes from this point, but once I come back for another round of editing later, I definitely pay closer attention to the inline comments. So it can be kind of tricky to figure out what you actually want to change based on beta reader feedback. Here's a few things that I keep in mind when I'm considering what to change. One, did more than one beta reader mention this? If more than one beta reader points out the same thing, I know that I've probably got to fix it. There can also be instances where two beta readers are saying the same thing, but it's not obvious that they're saying the same thing from the beginning. So let's say that beta reader A found a certain character annoying in this one chapter. Then beta reader B says that they found this chapter a little bit boring. So I have to figure out if it's possible that reader B is seeing the same thing as reader A, but they just can't pinpoint what exactly it is that they're not liking. This is of course where highlighting things becomes really helpful because I can easily reread one beta reader's feedback page like five times before I figure out if they're saying the same thing as this other person. Number two is keep the individual in mind. When people sign up to beta read my books, I have a Google form that asks them some questions about their reading preferences. So now that I'm reviewing their feedback, I can use this information to gauge their reactions. So for instance, this time around, I had a couple beta readers who had not read book one in the series. So there was a scene that wasn't as emotionally impactful on these beta readers as it was the ones who'd read the first book. Because those who'd read the first book were more familiar with this character who died in the last book. They understood the function of the scene in the plot, and that it affected the characters who were mourning in that scene. But it wasn't the same from their perspective, because they didn't know the character who died. So if I had only taken notes from those couple of new beta readers, I would have thought that whole scene needed to be rewritten. But the betas who've read the last book said that they really enjoyed that scene. And number three is what else can this change later in the story? After betas this time, I had a couple of moderate changes to make to the beginning of the book. And so I had to really carefully consider what kind of butterfly effect these changes could have later on in the story. So make sure you're really careful when you're planning changes and figure out what elements could be affected by them. So for me, it was a slight shift in the relationship between two characters and also a shift in the timeline of the story. Critique partners are also a great resource to ask if you're unsure about a change. And of course, take all beta reader feedback with a grain of salt. I had some larger changes to this book than I was expecting. The beta readers didn't connect with one of my main characters that much, and this really threw me for a loop when it came to making changes. I ended up deciding that shuffling things around would really help this problem, and so in the beginning of the book I realized I need to shift some of the chapters around and show more of a scene that would really help the readers understand the characters' motivations. Thankfully this scene also actually helped set the tone a lot better for the story, which I'm really glad I changed it now that I'm working on it. It's really surprising sometimes what things you don't see about your own writing. 
Being in the middle of beta reading is weird sometimes because you're just like kind of sitting there obsessively refreshing your email and one second you're like, oh my gosh, yes, they love this part. And the next second you're like, oh crap, I gotta rewrite six chapters. That's a plot hole. Mm. If you'd like to dive into the world of Alexia, you can check out Age of the Gods, which is a free short story I'll have linked down below. Alright, that's all I got for you, so thanks for watching. Bye!